kind of moves organically through seasons two, three, four to now she's this super badass, yep. capable, survival, survivalist uh, teenager and, you know, kind of full circle in a sense that now it's her role to uh, protect AJ. And she's kept that hat the whole time. She's kept oh that hat. Gosh. You can tell that hat's been through some wear. I was going to say that hat has... <laughs> like D is something. like flapping it's, off it. Yeah, there's, it's, uh, but she still has the hat. So, uh, so this is a very different look here right off the top. I mean, yeah. I've, I've not seen uh, sort of action like this from the series before. Yeah, the final season has sequences of unscripted combat where the players get to choose in a more mechanically engaging way how to, how to engage with the zombies. Cool. And I mean, visually, this looks excellent. What do you think, Kristen? I mean, I'm completely blown away by the visuals. This is probably the most like realistic that this yeah. has ever looked. Like, going back from the first season to here is mind-blowing. Yeah. To be able to see this big change. I'm super excited for this too because Clementine has now sort of become a mentor, not a mentor, but she's she's looking over somebody like someone used to do for her. So now she has AJ, she's looking out for him and trying to protect him. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's gonna be like? Uh, yeah, so like you're saying, basically Clementine, who learned all the lessons from Lee, now has someone of her own to protect. And she's done an excellent job at the start of the season about teaching him how to like survive in the zombie apocalypse. They're many years into it now, and both she and AJ know all the tricks and stuff to deal with like a world full of zombies. And, yeah, because AJ was born into this exactly. world. Exactly. AJ, AJ was born in this world and didn't know a world before there were zombies at all. So he's a very different character to raise than Clementine was in the first season. So here we're also seeing inside, it's that she finds a school and like a, a group of other kids in this world that there's no adults around. Yeah, so the kind of the thrust of the season is Clementine has been, uh, you know, traveling in the apocalypse for so long and she's been on the road and she's trying to finally find some place where she could, might be able to settle down and call home. And she finds an abandoned boarding school for Never troubled easy. youth. Yeah. That has a, it's a society of children which has no adults, so there's no one hung up about how the world used to work. Yeah. So this might be a real chance for her to make something that lasts. Is she going to be moving into a leadership role here, or is she sort of just like getting her wits about her? She's really capable, so people will start to look to, start to, look to her for examples of how, how, it, how things should go, but it's how that develops. You'll have to play the season to find out. Yeah. So we're seeing uh, some classic dialogue choices here, um, and, I, and it's definitely uh, familiar to me as somebody who's played so many games in the series, but um, are we still going to have these sort of Tough, a very interesting uh, choice, and, and what made you want to kind of uh, take this character in this direction? I think, like you said, it's full circle. It's kind of a natural direction for her character to go. She was taken care of by someone who taught her, and so as she's gotten older and learned to survive better, she's trying to pass those lessons on to someone else. Because mm -hmm. it's something that sort of represents, passing knowledge on like that is one of the only things that represents a kind of permanence in the Walking Dead world. So one thing I got to ask, and you probably won't tell me anything, but uh, the series is uh, sort of famous for bringing back characters, you know, in, in surprising ways. <laughs> so uh, without spoiling anything, might we see a familiar face or two? I can confirm we will see a familiar face or two in the season, and I will not tell you who. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, what else are you proud of? I mean, what, what are you, like, particularly engaged with in development here that you really want people to know about? Um, well, I, I come specifically from the cinematic angle of this thing. I've been working as the director at Telltale for ages, and I think the work our animators and our cinematic team have done make the Telltale games, and particularly Walking Dead Final Season, really stand out from other games yeah. of this type. It looks like a really well-shot movie, and everything is carefully crafted to give the player those experience that'll make them feel it the most that they possibly can. So I think the visual presentation of it, and the cinematography in particular, is something that's really special about our games. Mm -hmm. Melissa, uh, as, an, as an actor, um, what does Clementine sort of represent for you? Personally? Oh, man, that goes deep. I mean, it's been such a huge part of my life. Um, you know, I think I can speak for all of us who work. There's actually, you know, traveling and, and developing this insanely awesome fan base uh, whom I'm so eternally grateful for. Uh, I mean, this is a fan-driven game, literally your choices are what drives this game, so uh, it's, it's, I'm just honored to, to be Clementine, and you know, of course I'm sad it's coming to an end, but I feel like it's in a good, good space. I'm trying to wrap my head around I'm going to need like a serious support staff on that last <laughs> recording session, uh, but it's just been such a, an amazing part of, of my journey, um, so yeah. One thing I want to point out here is we're seeing some overhead camera that is completely different for this series, right? Uh, yeah, so this, 
the uh, the camera for the system is a for this season is an orbital cam. Uh, so you get a third person look. So you really get to kind of dig into the environments. And there's a big emphasis on exploration and actually looking around 3D I was spaces. Say, it looks like we're moving more than we ever really have before. Yeah, exactly. It's less of the fixed traditional nav camera type stuff from the previous adventure gaming seasons, and is more of a modern a, a modern orbital camera that allow you to explore the environments in great detail. And the environments look amazing, so you're going to want to yeah. explore the hell out of them. And the combat, it's no longer just QTEs anymore. It's no longer just QTEs. There's uh, sections of unscripted combat where you get to choose how you engage zombies in a sort of higher level of danger and difficulty we've had in the game before, and in addition to cinematic sequences of QTEs for like really flashy stuff. Could you, could you tell us who this character we're seeing here is, this, this blonde gentleman? Yeah, so this, uh, this <laughs> mulleted individual is Marlon, uh, who is the leader of the, uh, the abandoned boarding school that Clementine finds. He's uh, kind of keeping this group of kids together in the apocalypse, and he's going to be a really important character for, uh, for the season in this episode. Interesting. And, and where is Clementine right now? Like, where is she mentally? Where is she, you know, what, where, where does the game sort of show her starting off. The game opens with Clementine and AJ on the road, and they're, they're kind of really at the wit's end of how long they've been doing this kind of journey. They're really good at it, but they're running low on food, and they've been continually, and Clementine's had tons of those fail around her, yeah. as Walking Dead groups tend to do throughout all the other seasons. Yep. So she's, this season has her best chance at something that might last and be more permanent in, the, in this kind of world. And it takes a bit of bravery, you know, to, to reinvest in something like that after it hasn't worked out so many times. So Yeah, it really speaks to Clementine's resilience as a survivor and everything she picked up from what she learned from Lee that she's still trying. Mm -hmm. She never stops trying. That's right. Um, game is looking really, really good. I mean, this is Thank a you. visual leap in a major way. Um, yeah, I can't wait. So when is this coming out? It's, it's, it's really cool to, to meet the fans and, and talk all things Walking Dead with them. I mean, this is a fan-driven game, so... Uh, and you've been a part of it for how long now? We, we've been trying to do the math. Yeah, we've, been, we've not been doing the math the last on three camera. Days, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Subtract <laughs> 2012 from 2018. <laughs> Okay. It's as simple as that, and we can't figure it out. It's some number that, that just <laughs> defies. Now, hold on. Yeah. Okay, now we're watching the B-roll here, yeah. and this is something... We've seen a couple of things that, that have been playing on there, yes. Yeah, definitely so. want to bring this up, the new gameplay. Yeah, so what you just saw there was unscripted combat. So we're introducing segments of in, uh, unscripted combat um, to really kind of put the player into the situation and allow them to feel that uncertainty and that fear of living in a world that, that, um, that is overrun by undead. Mm -hmm. um, also, what we're seeing, I think, um, we might have already gone past it, but um, we have an over-the-shoulder camera system mm -hmm. as well, which is also a break from what we normally do, where we're very much more fixed with the cinematic style. Um, this is just like, again, we're like trying to create the most um, engaging Walking Dead experience yet. And um, it just allows the player to explore our environments in great detail. Um, you know, the, we can also see they're looking really good too with, cause with this uh, new graphic black art style. Does that mean there will be more to explore since we can yeah. look around now? Yeah, there's more, more to explore. Yeah, there, there's more to explore. There's, there's even um, a small collectible system in it. And yeah, so there's definitely more gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> and this one is going to be four chapters, is that correct? It's going to be four episodes, yeah. Okay. And do you have a timeline on when all four are going to be out? <laughs> well, you know, yes. But the plan is to get them all out by the end of the year. Okay. Um, Ooh, so that's it's exciting. a plan. So that's, a, that's a what plan. we're aiming for. So hopefully, hopefully that'll work out. If not, hopefully that's okay. Work out. I'm like, happens. take your time. Yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Have you had an opportunity to play these games? Yeah, yeah. I, I have. I'm, I'm, I, I'm actually a huge fan. I've been a huge fan of the franchise since. Uh, well, I watched the show, then I read the comics, and obviously. Um, so, and it's cool because when I play it, I'm actually really able to like get myself out of my performance. And obviously, I don't get to see the background and the ambiance noises and the other actors. Uh, so it's it's really cool. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a big fan. It must be exciting to see your work like in the fully implemented stage yeah. oh, and totally. see exactly what it was that you were working on. Since yeah. you you probably record alone. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Aj, come on. Row, 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 row your boat gently down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Don't forget to scream. Come on, you love this one. 
It's a bad song. You shouldn't scream. Ever. Screaming brings monsters. Yeah, you're right, kiddo. The song was written before when kids didn't have to worry about monsters. I don't remember a time without monsters. I know. Never go alone. Never go alone, right. And what do we do when the monsters come? We shoot them in the head. And what else? Always save the last bullet for yourself. Now, what do you do if I get bit? <laughs>